A ferocious battle is underway across the U.S. and much of the world. It involves organisms too small to see with the naked eye, but organisms that could nonetheless have a very big impact on all of us. They're called genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, and they could dramatically alter the food that is the foundation of our health and wellness. It's estimated that GMOs are now found in more than 70% of all foods in a typical American supermarket. Genetically modified organisms are made by taking genes from one species and inserting them into another species. The result is a new organism that supposedly does a better job of killing weeds and pests. The current policy of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration on GMOs was created in 1992. In it, the FDA says it's not aware of any information showing that GMOs pose safety concerns. But a lawsuit in 1998 forced 44,000 internal FDA memos into the public domain and revealed a very different story. As I combed through those 44,000 pages of memoranda and other documents, I was shocked because it became clear that the FDA had been lying repeatedly since 1992 because they claimed that there was an overwhelming consensus within the scientific community that these foods were safe. But the overwhelming consensus within their own scientific staff was exactly opposite. These foods could not be presumed safe. The overwhelming consensus among the scientists working at the FDA were not only that GMOs were different, but that they were dangerous. They could lead to allergies, toxins, new diseases, and nutritional problems, they said over and over in their memos. They urged their superiors to require long-term studies, but were ignored. GMOs have been in the U.S. food supply since the mid-90s, and even then they sparked fierce opposition. Eden Foods, a major producer of organic packaged goods, declared in 1993 they would not allow any genetically engineered ingredients in their products. The company declared its opposition to, quote, the introduction of these foods for human consumption in any manner. They said we are fundamentally opposed to these foods for moral, ethical, and practical reasons. That position, especially with regard to safety concerns, has been echoed around the world by more than 60 countries where GMOs are currently banned. And in the U.S., an increasing number of companies and organizations have joined in opposition to GMOs, including the assertion that GMOs are needed to feed a hungry planet. John Wood has been a farmer and a rancher in northern Missouri all his life. His firm, U.S. Wellness Meats, has become a national supplier of grass-fed beef as a result of growing demand for meat that's raised on a starch-free diet that's the equivalent of a salad bar, a diet free of added hormones and antibiotics. He questions claims about better yields for all GMO crops. And what's fascinating, in the last 10 years, soybean trend line yields have not gone up. Well, why is that? Well, you think maybe 90% of the soybeans we're producing today are GMO. Is that a piece of the problem? Sally Fallon Morell runs a national foundation focused on improving our diet by supporting traditional foods that are free of chemicals and artificial additives. It's just not true that we need GMOs to feed the world. The yield of the genetically altered crops is lower. Uh, they, the crops are much more expensive for farmers and they require, of course, all the herbicides and uh, inputs. In fact, in Europe, there have been tremendous advances in the last 10 years in productivity of grains and other crops using old-fashioned uh, techniques. Much of the opposition to GMOs results from the increase of digestive disorders that's occurred since GMOs were introduced into the American diet in the mid-1990s. We are now learning just how dangerous these foods are. They create havoc in the gut, either by creating holes in the gut or by interfering with the gut bacteria in ways that we can't even imagine. In 2013, a report by MIT researchers confirmed that a substantial part of the U.S. food supply contains residues of glyphosate, the chief ingredient in the world's most popular weed killer. The MIT report linked glyphosate to a wide range of problems and diseases, including Parkinson's, infertility, and cancer. This MIT study starts to pin the tail on the donkey when it comes to autism and Alzheimer's and Crohn's disease. And I know several people that were impacted with Crohn's as teenagers. 
Does that make sense? No. That wasn't going on back in the 1940s, the 1950s, 1960s. So what's changed, you know? And so, you know, you are what you eat. 99.9% .9 of U.S. consumers will, if you did a saliva and blood test, will probably show positive for glyphosate unless you've taken some action to eliminate it from your diet. And I ask people as I go and give lectures, and I say, how many of you have gotten rid of GMOs and feel better? And many, many people raise their hand. I said, okay, from what? Always there's people with allergies that get better, gut problems, headaches, also mental disorders, asthma, skin problems. Thousands of doctors are now prescribing non-GMO diets to their patients, and their patients are getting better. Avoiding GMOs in the foods we buy is an increasingly big issue for many people. Well, next week we're going to see how it's possible to do that at the grocery store.